gospel with clear annunciation. Blessed be the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another golden opportunity to teach his precious word to his precious people. Today, I'm going to be teaching on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you can say, who is the Holy Spirit and his present day ministry in us and also in the world. If today is your first time watching this program, uh, the name of this channel is uh, Simple Truth Gospel with Kira Nuzeshi. And every week I post a new video or new teachings on this channel. So uh, if you subscribe, you'll be the first one to be alerted whenever I have a new teachings posted on this channel. Also, if you have any questions or prayer requests that you would like us to answer, uh, you can shoot me an email at simpletruthgospel at hotmail.com and we will be glad to answer your questions. Uh, before we go ahead and continue with today's program, let us release our faith now together. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for utterance that I will speak to your people today as the oracle and oracle of the Lord. Father, I pray that you will give me the anointing but an anointing to teach, anointing that enlightens, anointing that will bring the light of the glorious word of God to us. Holy Spirit of God, you are the teacher. I am just a vessel. I pray that you will lead us into all the truth and you will show us the things that are yet to come. Minister to each and everyone listening today simultaneously. Take whatever you, you, they need, uh, Spirit of God, and release it to their spirit. We always propose to be both doers and hearers of your word. It is none of me, but all of you, Father God, be praised, glorified, and magnified forever and ever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm so excited today to teach on this topic today, the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Or in other words, now we can say, uh, who is the Holy Spirit and what is his present day ministry on earth or also in the hearts of the believers? So it is a very important topic. Um, the more we know about the Holy Spirit of God and his ministry in us, the more we will be able to receive and uh, walk in fullness with him. So that is why this teaching is very important. At the end of today's teaching, you will be so glad that you understand more about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, his present day ministry right now in us and also in the earth. You know, the Father God is now in heaven and Jesus Christ is in heaven. But the Holy Spirit is the only one who is right here on earth, uh, ministering to every one of us. And... Um, um, that is what I'm going to be doing today. Um, we'll be talking about uh, who is the Holy Spirit of God and what, what are his ministries, the things that he's doing on earth right now. So that, that will help us uh, because as soon as we become aware of these things, uh, it will help us in our um, uh, Christianity and in our, um, um, our lives as children of God. So who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit, as we know, is the third person of the Trinity. So in 1 John, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, and the Bible says, There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. So you see, in the beginning, at the creation of the earth, during, uh, uh, from the beginning, the Bible says, says there were three that bore witness the Father, the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit has been there from the beginning. He is the third person of the Trinity. And um, it is the Holy Spirit of God that created the heavens and the earth. And uh, if we go to Job chapter 26 verse 13, the Bible says, By His Spirit He had garnished the heavens. So everything you see, Visible and invisible, 
Every one of them is created by the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is the power of creation. It is the Spirit, is the power of God that created everything that we can see, both visible and invisible. And also the human spirit, you know, during salvation, as, soon, as long as you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and, and, as your Lord and your Savior, that moment that you receive him as your Lord and your Savior, your inner man, which is your spirit, got recreated. And uh, who did that recreation? It is the Spirit of God that uh, recreates the human spirit. For in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible says, For by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of in, into one body. So the Spirit of God is the one that will recreate your spirit, your human spirit at uh, salvation. And he will put you into the body of Christ. So the, the Spirit of God is a person. Just like Jesus Christ is a person. Father God has a personality. The Holy Spirit himself is a person. It's not like an imagination or some kind of uh, 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 thought or influence. No, the Holy Spirit of God is a person. is a divine personality. And now, the Holy Spirit of God is the one that will put the love of God in our hearts. Remember in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible says, that the love of Christ, the love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. So once you got to recreate it and you become born again, the Holy Spirit will take the love of the Father God and he will put it in your heart. And that is a big difference. This love will not exist in your heart until you become born again. And after the Holy Spirit has recreated your spirit now, the next step, what, what he does next is to put the love of God in your own heart so that you have the ability to love the way that Father God loves. The Holy Spirit is the one that will always testify about Jesus Christ. And we can find that in John chapter 15 verse 26. So the Holy Spirit will be a witness, will always testify about, the, uh, about Jesus Christ. Jesus said that he will take that which belongs to me and he will show it unto you. So he's the one that will testify about Jesus Christ in all places. So the Holy Spirit is the one that also inspired the word of God. You see, the whole Bible, the whole written word of God, the whole Bible, the word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So it was the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God that uh, gave the, the, the prophets, the apostles, those who wrote the Bible, it gave them that um, uh, inspiration to write the Word of God. So we can say that the whole Bible or the whole Word of God is not the Word of man. The Bible is telling us right here that the, it is the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that through that inspiration they were able to write the word of God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. You see, Father God will not do anything. Let me put it this way. God the Father will not do anything except by his own spirit. So his spirit is his own power. So we can say that the Holy Spirit of God is the power of God. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, we said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good and healing those who were oppressed of the devil. So we can see here that the Holy Spirit is that power, the power of God that anointed Jesus Christ, that he was able to fulfill his ministry here on earth. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says, But you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So the, 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 the Holy Spirit, he says that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Which means the Holy Spirit is that power that came upon them. On the day of, Pente on the day of Pentecost, the power that the apostles received, that power that was able to make them get out of that place they were hiding. And boldly they went out preaching the gospel 
That power is the power of the Holy Ghost. So Holy Ghost is the power of God. In Genesis chapter 1, and if we read verse 1 and verse 2, we, 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 we were told that, uh, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So during the creation of the earth, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. But nothing happened. But at the moment the Father God spoke, light be, the Spirit of God went into work and the light became. So we can see here that the Spirit of God is the power of God. When the Father God speaks, the Spirit of God is the one that carries out the action and brings that action into manifestation. So the Spirit of God is the power of God. Father God will not do anything except by his own spirit. He is the one that gives us the utterance. And I, I'm talking about the, the, the experience now, subsequent to salvation. Some people will call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit or infilling of the Spirit of God. So at, at this experience, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the utterance to speak in an unknown tongue, to speak in many tongues. So this is not a natural experience, it's a supernatural experience. Once you get born again, that is salvation. But that is an experience that is subsequent to salvation, and we call it the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is evidenced by speaking with many tongues. The Holy Spirit is the one who will give you that utterance. He does not speak in tongues for you. You are the one who will do the utterance. You are the one who will speak in tongues. But the utterance will be coming from the Spirit of God, who is now one with your spirit. Remember the Bible says that those that are joined with the Lord, they are one spirit with Him. So the Spirit of God is the one that gives you utterance. And that is a very, very big thing in the lives of many Christians. Any Christian who speaks in, in, in many tongues, you, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. For there are so much benefits in speaking with many tongues. It is not the topic for today. Uh, we'll cover it on a different... As a matter of fact, I have a teaching that I call speaking in tongues is for every believer. And you, if, you, if, you'll ask, if you will assess my iCarb on YouTube, you will find that teaching. And you will learn more about this, uh, uh, about um, uh, utterance and how the Spirit of God gives utterance in, in, in many tongues. So if we go to um, Amplified Version now, uh, let's go to um, John chapter 14, verse 26. And the Bible says, um, The Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name. And that word Comforter is translated now as Advocate, Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, a Standby, a Helper. So you can see all of these names here. You know, that's what that comforter means. So you can see the, 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 the work of the Spirit of God to, 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 to Christians, to those who believe, those who are filled with the Spirit of God. He becomes your comforter, your advocate, your intercessor, your counselor, your strengthener, your standby, and your helper. What more can you, what more do you need? What more can you need? This is all of these things is what the Holy Spirit of God is for us. So it is very important. The more we become aware of what the ministry of the Spirit of God is in our lives today as Christians, the more we will be able to go into fullness of them. The more we can convert them, the more we can desire them, the more we can be hungry for them. And the more we can see them manifest in our lives. Because there is no way something will manifest in your life that you don't know anything about. But you, be, you, you start by you being aware of that. And the moment you become aware of that, then you can desire those things or convert them or become hungry for them. And you can see those things begin to manifest in your life. So that's why it's very important that we understand the person of the Holy Spirit of God, and then his ministry in us today, his present day ministry. And the Holy Spirit of God, if we go to um, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, the Bible says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. 
So the Holy Spirit is the one that will that leads the children of God. That is an indication. Say those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And how does the Holy Spirit of God lead us? If we go to the same Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it will say, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So the Holy Spirit of God is the one that will lead us by inward witness. That is the number one way he will lead us. And the number two way he will lead us is by still small voice. Still small voices in our own heart. That is another way the Holy Spirit will lead us. And sometimes he will lead us by an authoritative voice. You will hear the voice of the Spirit of God and it feels to you. You, you, you feel like you, you had an audible voice, but that was his own voice in your own spirit. So he is the one. Can you imagine a lot of things that you can accomplish in your life if you are led by the Spirit of God? Because he is there within you. He's there in you. If you are filled with the Spirit of God, he is there in you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is there with you to the end of the time. So can you see all of there are so many things that he can lead you into, into success in life, into making decisions. When you're trying to make a decision, there is always like a check in your spirit. Just within you, there is a check. I call it um, a red light or a green light. There will be peace about it. The more you think about that decision, if there is peace about it, that is the Spirit of God leading you in that direction, telling you that it's okay to take that step. But if there is all, if that, if if whenever you think about that decision, and there is always unpeacefulness about it, that is a red light. Is the Spirit of God within you communicating through your own spirit, telling your mind that you should not go in that direction at all? And so many Christians, they don't have that, uh, they, 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 they don't know how to perceive the inward witness of the Spirit of God. So they go ahead and make so many mistakes. But you, if you ask them always the way that you should go, in even the little, even the little things, in everyday activity, in making decisions, he will lead you into all the truth. Remember, he will show you the things that are yet to come. And he will bring to your remembrance the things spoken to you in the word of God. He is there always helping you. Remember, he is your helper, your strengthener, your counselor, your advocate, your standby. So this is the ministry of the Holy Spirit of God in us today as the children of God. So we have to become aware. And the more we become aware of the, his ministry in us today, the more we will benefit the more we will go into fullness of his manifestations. The Bible says that he will guide you into all the truth. The truth. The truth in life. The truth according to the word of God. That is in John chapter 16 verse 13. And he said that he will show you things that are yet to come. Do you want to have information about the future? You see... We live in the physical realm or in the physical world. Our senses are limited. You can't see what will come in the future. You, 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 you can't. But through the Spirit of God, He can show you the things that are yet to come. He can lead you towards directions that will be of your benefit in the future. That you will not regret. So that is why he says that he will show you the things yet to come. But first of all, you have to acknowledge him and acknowledge this ministry in your life. And you will begin to see those things begin to manifest in your life. So look, just think about it. Holy Spirit will show you the things that are yet to come. When you can't even make a decision. Because you don't know which way it will go. You can't see the future. It's difficult to, to, to take a step. But the Bible says that the Spirit of God will show you the things that are yet to come if you would listen to Him. If you would pay attention to His leadings and His promptings. And how does He show us and lead us? Remember I told you earlier 
through inward witness, still small voices, and through that authoritative voice of the Spirit of God. The moment you become conscious of this, this way, the ways that He leads us, you will begin to see a lot of success in your life, victories. For the Spirit of God is here, He is here on earth. So He's come to live in you and abide in you forever. That's what Jesus Christ said. You see, the Spirit of God is the one that will help us in our infirmities. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with a groaning which cannot be uttered. So that word infirmities means in our weakness. The Spirit of God is the one who will... Remember, the Spirit of God doesn't do your praying for you. You will pray. You will do your prayers. But it says here, when we know not what we should pray as we ought to, in your own physical mind and senses, you are limited. That is why it's very important to pray the Holy Ghost, to speak it with many tongues. Because when you speak in tongues, you are speaking, you are, you are having a direct communication to God. The devil doesn't get in on it. He doesn't know what you're talking about. You bypass your mind. Now you are having a communication to God. So you, 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 you are uttering mysteries and secrets, hidden secrets. That's what the Bible says. You are talking to God, not to man. And now he's telling you, he's telling you here that when you know not what you should pray as you ought to, within your mind you are limited. You don't know exactly how to pray, what to pray completely. But it says here that the Holy Spirit will take hold together with you. He said he will, he will, take, he will make intercessions for you. So he takes hold together with you in your praying life. He will help you because he is your own helper. That is why it's very important. As, long, as soon as we become aware of the things that the Holy Spirit is doing here for us, the more we can benefit from all these things. Remember in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, it says, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. How do you know all things? He's talking about your inner man, your spirit, the one that is now joined with the Spirit of God. He says that he knows all things by the power of the Holy Ghost. It is the Spirit of God that will quicken your mind through your own spirit. And he's telling us here that your recreated human spirit has the ability of knowing all things. How is that possible? It is by the power of the Holy Ghost who is now one with your own spirit. Now, it is the, it is the spirit of God that operates in spiritual gifts. If we read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and if we pick it up from verse 8, it, it gives you about nine spiritual gifts of the Holy Ghost. He says to one is given word of wisdom, to another word of knowledge. So it's, it, there are about nine of them. The, sign, the signing of, of spirits, diversities of tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, working of miracles, Gifts of healings, special faith. So there are nine of them that I just mentioned now. And, and, and the Holy Spirit of God is the one that will manifest these gifts. And the Bible says the manifestation of the Spirit is given to all men to profit with all. So each and every one of us can have the benefit of these spiritual gifts. You can have the benefits of them... But remember that these spiritual gifts, the ones that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, these ones will manifest as the Spirit of God wills. You don't have the ability to turn them on and to turn them off whenever you will. The Holy Spirit is the one who will manifest them in your life. But once you become, once you become aware of these gifts, 
And I will, I will make this statement that speaking in tongues is the doorway to the manifestations of these gifts. Remember, it says that the Spirit of God is the one who will manifest them as He wills. You don't have the ability to turn them on or turn them off whenever you want. But to think about this thing, do you know what word of wisdom will do for you? A word of wisdom. Now, when we talk about word of wisdom, wisdom is the things that we are looking forward in the future. They are the plan and the purpose of God for us. So we look about things that have not yet happened. They are in the future. So that is word of wisdom. So in all the wisdom of God, he gives you just a word. A word that you need for that moment. Do you know how much that will do for you? To another one, he gives word of knowledge. Now, when we talk about word of knowledge, word of knowledge is something that happens right now or in the past. So, all of a sudden, he gives you word of knowledge. You were able to know what happened in the past. Or something that is happening at that moment, which there is no other way you could have known. But it's supernatural. All of these nine gifts are supernatural. They're not natural. The Holy Spirit of God is the one that will manifest them in your life. Think about the sonning of our spirits, which is hearing or seeing into the realm of the spirit. God is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. Demons are spirit. Angels are spirit. But with this ministry, with this gift, this spiritual gift, you are able to see in the realm of the spirit. And you can see them or you can hear. So, and if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31, the Bible itself says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. So it's talking about these gifts here. He said that we should covet them earnestly. The word to covet means to, 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 to be hungry, to crave. To seek with, uh, with, with vehement strength. So the Bible, the Bible is telling us here that we have to covet. Honestly. And if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 1, it also tells us to desire spiritual gifts. So if the Bible is telling us to desire them, means they, they, are, they, they, they are very important in our lives. But the Holy Spirit is the one who will manifest these spiritual gifts in your life. He will operate them. So that is why it's very, very important to be aware of this. Because like I keep saying, if you're not aware of these things, they will not happen in your life. You wouldn't even have the desire for them. Because you're just, not, you're just unaware of them. So the Holy Spirit is the one that will operate these spiritual gifts in our life. And as I've listed them, there are nine of them. And there are some of also listed in, in Romans 12. About seven more of these listed there. So now, what does Jesus Christ himself say about the Holy Spirit? Let us hear from the mouth of the Master himself. What did he say about the Spirit of God? And please go with me. Let us go to John chapter 16, verse 7. And I will read the Bible. I'll read it to you so that we can be, so we can see what the Spirit of God, what Jesus Christ said about the Holy Spirit himself. So in John chapter 16, verse 7, And then Jesus Christ said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I go, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus is saying that it's expedient that he sends the Comforter to us. The word expedient means that it's better for us. So Jesus Christ, he sees it dim. Very important that it's better for us to have the Holy Spirit here on earth 
than himself in his physical body. Think about it. This is what Jesus Christ himself said about the Holy Spirit. It is expedient that he, that he, that he goes and then he sends the Holy Spirit to us. So he says the Holy Spirit of God is very, very important to us. He said it's better for us that he send the Holy Spirit. Because when Jesus Christ here was on earth, he could only be in one place at a time. He operated as a human being, as a man. So for you to have, for the Holy Spirit to be, to, to be then, because the Pentecost had not come yet, so the Holy Spirit was not in the hearts of men and women. So then Jesus was the only one who has the fullness of the Spirit of God in him. So the apostles, they witnessed the Spirit of God in Jesus. But now, do you see the big difference? On the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And now he lives in the hearts of every believer. That's why Jesus Christ said it's very, very important. It's expedient. It's for your own good that I go away and send you the Holy Spirit who will come and he will live in you and he will abide in you forever. And so far, everything I said about the Holy Spirit, think about this because right now he is in you. And you can have all the benefits of the Spirit of God. So this is what Jesus Christ said about the Holy Spirit of God. And if we go to, to Luke chapter 24, verse 49, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22, and 49 says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but telling you in the city of Jerusalem until you've been doomed with power from on high. So Jesus Christ said that he's, he's sending the, the promise of the Father upon us. And then he went ahead and told us what this, the, the, the power is going to do. The Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. And he told us that he, he, that he will endow us with power. And that's exactly what happened. The Spirit of God came and the apostles were doomed with power. They were not afraid anymore. They went out and they spoke with boldness. They, 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 they preached the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with boldness. So this is what, the, which is what Jesus Christ said about the Holy Spirit of God. And also in John chapter 14 verse 16. John 14, 16. Bible says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that he will send you another comforter. He said, we'll send you a comforter, that he will abide with you forever. So you can see that the Holy Spirit is not going anywhere soon. No, he's not. It's come to stay, to abide in us forever. That's what Jesus Christ said about the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 10, But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. The latter part of that uh, uh, verse 10, John chapter 14, verse 10. Jesus said, The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. Jesus Christ called the Holy Spirit his Father that dwelleth in him. What are we calling him today? What are we taking him for? Do we recognize the Holy Spirit of God as the Father that dwelleth in us? Think about what that will do for you. The moment you have that revelation that the Spirit of God is the Father that dwelleth in you, a lot of things will begin to change for you. Just have that consciousness. Have that revelation. Jesus Christ called the Holy Spirit, the Father that dwelleth in me, he does the work. He couldn't do anything on his own. That's what he said. And you are here on earth, and you think you could do anything on your own? 
It is not by might nor by power. It is by the Spirit of God. The race is not to the swift, neither is the battle to the strong. It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but God has showed mercy. You can only do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthen you by the power of the Holy Ghost. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, he says, Little children, he said, he said, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is he that is in you? If you read the beginning, that verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, he was talking about evil spirits. But then he turned around and he said in verse 4, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is he that is in you? The Spirit of God, whom the, 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 Jesus Christ asked the Father to send. And he said that he came to abide in you forever. He is that one that is in you. And he is that one that is greater than any forces of darkness out here in this world. That is the Holy Spirit of God in us today. Now, there is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I have said everything not everything, because we couldn't cover this uh, 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 program, we couldn't, we couldn't cover this topic in this program. So I, I have said so many things today about the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us and in the world. Now, I will talk briefly about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or infilling of the Spirit of God. Now, the moment you become born again, like I said earlier, your spirit was recreated by the Holy Spirit and he immerses you into the body of Christ. But that's not all the Holy Spirit that is. I mean, as a child of God, you, you have the Holy Spirit, but not the fullness of the Spirit of God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 9, Now, if any man have not the Spirit of God, he is none of, none of his. So you do have the Spirit of God in you. Once you become born again, you have the Spirit of God in you. Also in Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Bible says, The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So you do have the Spirit of God in you, but not the fullness of the Spirit of God. It's just like having a glass of water and being immersed in a swimming pool. But it's a big difference. So the Holy Spirit of God, that is what we call receiving the personality of the Spirit of God. He is a divine person. So you receive his fullness in you. And that's what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In us of the apostles, Everywhere that people, they laid hands on the people, they spoke with other tongues. So speaking with other tongues is an evidence that you are filled with the Spirit of God. Remember in Acts chapter 19 verse 2, Paul was going to Ephesus and he came across some disciples and he asked them, Have you received the Holy Spirit after you believed? Which means there is a, an experience subsequent to salvation. The people he was talking to were already disciples. They were believers. But then he turned around and he asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit after you believed? So all through the Acts of the Apostles, you can see that people, when they received the Spirit of God, it was the evidence was that they spoke with other tongues. So that is why it's very, very important. To be filled with the Spirit of God as evidence when speaking with many tongues. Like I said earlier, speaking in tongues is a doorway to the manifestations of the spirit of, of the of the gift of the spirits. The one that I mentioned to you, nine of them that were that we saw in First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. It is an experience that is very, very important in the life of every Christian. And someone will ask, then how do you receive? Remember, it is by faith. Everything we receive from God is by faith. Your salvation is by faith. The Spirit of God is the gift of God to His children. 
It is a gift. It's free. All you have to do is receive it by faith. In Luke chapter 11 verse 13, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? This is what the Bible says. How much more will the father be willing to give his Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So you ask, that's how you receive. And you receive the Spirit of God by faith. So if you're watching this program, and you are not yet filled with the Spirit of God, first of all, I have a, a teaching that I call Speaking in Tongues Belongs to Every Believer. It's accessible in my archive on YouTube, Simple Truth Gospel with Kira Nozeshi. But right now, I will lead you again. If you're watching this program and you are not yet filled with the Spirit of God, as evidence we're speaking with many tongues, I will lead you now in prayers. And you can receive the Spirit of God right now, in the infilling of the Holy Spirit right now, and you can speak with many tongues. And remember, when you speak with tongues, it's not just a one-thing experience, one-day experience. It's not like a one-time experience. It is something that is on a continuous basis. The more you pray in other tongues, the more you put yourself in the position for the manifestation of the spirit of the gift of the Spirit of God in your life. So it's not a one-time thing, something you do on a daily basis. Paul said that he spoke in tongues more than all the Corinthians put together. The church members, all of them put together. He said he spoke in tongues more than every one of them. He wrote more than half of the pistols. Every other person that wrote the pistols, they all were tongue talkers. <laughs> Can you have you thought about it? Even, even the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were all tongue talkers. So if you're watching this program and you are not yet filled with the Spirit of God, as evidence we're speaking with many tongues, I will lead you in prayers right now. Now pray with me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, your word say that if I will ask you for the Holy Spirit of God, that you will give it to me. So I ask you this day to fill me with your spirit. Jesus Christ, you are the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. I believe now and by faith, I receive the divine person of the Holy Spirit in my heart. And I trust you now, Holy Spirit of God, to give me utterance now in the Spirit. Now, open your mouth, begin to speak by faith. Even if it's one syllable, even if it's just one syllable, remember it gets better and better. The utterance is not coming from you. It is by the Holy Spirit of God, but you are the one who is to speak it out. So open your mouth now and speak out. Bangra de skendro la pokla askala pato. Mengre incro do scopla ekre me sencrete. Bangro do sila alama so pato. Bien croncoto inkala ambro scopla. Ingre askatala prakata. Don't listen to yourself. Don't listen to what you're saying. Just speak. Just open your mouth and let yield to the Spirit of God. Me crendo crusco ilke aklama centre. Aba grendo uscombra engre masuente. Alla prakata. Keep yielding to the Spirit of God, even if it's just one syllable. Remember, it is by faith. Keep speaking. Now, now that you have spoke with other tongues, blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are now filled with the Spirit of God and evidence will speak with many tongues. Don't let this slip you by. Make it a daily thing. Pray even more in other tongues. So if you, and for you to understand more about speaking with many tongues, read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The whole chapter is dedicated to speaking with other tongues. And remember, speaking in tongues in your personal life, which is what we just did now, Praying and communicating to the Father God is completely different from the tongues that the Bible talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. 
That one is called the ministering tongue. It is it's not given to every man. Not everyone will have it. You will only have it as God, as the Spirit of God will. That one is very, very, is completely different. That is the one you speak in the church or in a place of gathering, and it has to be interpreted. But it is given by the Spirit of God. You could not turn that one on and off anytime you want. It is the Spirit of God that will give you that utterance. And remember, the difference here is it is God now speaking to his people through that uh, through 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 uh, tongues. But the one we just did now is for your own personal life. It is you now talking to God. So this one we just spoke now, you are talking to your Father in heaven. The tongue that is mentioned that doesn't belong to everyone in in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is the one that God himself is ministering, talking to his people to an individual. And we call it ministry in other tongues. It's for ministry. So this is the, the big difference because there are people who don't understand the difference and they will go and, and point at what the Bible says that not everyone speaks with tongues. So this is the big difference. Yes, not everyone will speak in ministering tongues because that one is given to is manifested by the Spirit of God as He wills. But the tongues that the Bible talks about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, all, 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 the, from, from, from verse 1 all to the end, it's talking about tongues, your personal life. The tongue, that's what Paul, Paul was talking about there. So it's completely different. But if you will listen to the message that I told you about speaking in tongues belong to every believer, you will understand more about this. So if you're watching, I've come to the end of this uh, program today. If you're watching this program and you are not yet a Christian, now is your opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. Do not wait anymore. Remember, for you to receive the Holy Spirit, you must be born again first. Now, you can receive these two experiences simultaneously. You don't have to tear your weight. As soon as you get born again, you can be filled with the Spirit of God and speak with many tongues. But you have to be born again first. So for you to get into this experience of speaking with many tongues, you have to be born again first. So now, if you're watching this program and you are not yet born again, I will lead you now in prayers. So pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that he is your son and he died for my sins. You raised him up from the dead on the third day. Jesus Christ, I ask you this day to come into my life. and Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe that I'm born again. I believe I'm a child of God. I believe that I'm a Christian now. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful experience. Blessed be your holy name. Now, friends, if you pray that prayer, you are now born again and you are a child of God. Congratulations. And now you can experience this subsequent experience now that is speaking with tongues, that is an infilling of the Holy Spirit as evidence with speaking with tongues. Now you can, you, can, you can walk right into this second experience now. You don't have to tarry or wait. And find a very good church. Where the word of God, the way they teach the word of God and become a member of that church so that Satan don't take advantage of you because of your ignorance of the word of God. Remember that your faith will come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So continue, don't be, don't, don't, don't be left out. Don't become a baby Christian for, for, for life. Grow. Desire the sincere make of the word of God that you may grow thereby. That's what Peter said. So remember that it is those who do the word of God that are the one that will get the full benefit of the word of God, not hearers only. And as always, surely there is an end and your expectations will not be cut off. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus.